Shalom and good evening. Shalom and good evening to you all. I, I believe that we are all doing well by God's grace. Even though we are in the midst of severe pandemic, COVID-19, I believe that COVID is in the plans of God. God has a plan for you. And God's plan for you can never be aborted by COVID-19 if you put your trust in Him. We are privileged to have done one song, Trust on a Bee. I don't, have, I don't owe the copyrights to the song, but it's a privilege to use the song to honor the name of the Lord. God has sent me to give you a very important message, a message that will change your life forever. A message that will help you to reorganize your life and to place yourself in the role and the purpose and the plan of God. Shall we bow heads down in prayer? Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you this afternoon and this morning, whatever time. Oh God, I, this brethren are listening to this message. We say we thank you, Lord. We ask that you touch the hearts of people. Let the destinies and the lives of people be changed through this message. Oh God, let it be a blessing for your people. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Um, this message is so important, and I believe that after listening to this message, you need to share it. I would usually not come on Facebook, but of late, God has given me important messages I believe that the world has to hear. Tonight I'm talking about familiar voices and familiar voices is a very subtle and but but yet it's an ancient strategy the enemy has been using to destroy the destinies and the life of people. The destinies and the life of many great men and women in the ministry and in businesses, presidents all over the world, presidents and corporate executives have had their lives and you know they have their destiny destroyed by what I, I call the strategy of familiar voices many people have been destroyed by the counsel of others and by the advice of others why because that advice seems so logical seems so understandable seems so right at the time the advice was given but it wasn't in the world and it wasn't the plan of God in the lives of some of these, of these people have been destroyed Beloved, <laughs> you need to understand that it's not any, everybody who laughs or smiles with you or empathizes with you when you're in trouble or even lends you a helping hand has your interest at hand. You see, many people are so ignorant about this, this subtle device of the enemy that, you know, their, 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 their lives have been destroyed and their destinies have been destroyed. Look, there are so many people around us who have been planted by the, the, by the enemy to pick information from us and to destroy us. In fact, Many people have received friendly gifts and advice from people who were very close with them and did not seek God about the gifts and advice of these people. And when they used them and they hated this advice, their lives were completely destroyed. <laughs> Look, the enemy can place people around us to monitor us. You know, uh, quite a time, um, there was a time I, I listened to a program where, you know, a, a young lady confessed that. She was a witch, and they, and sometimes they, they place, you know, monitoring spirit in the lives of people, okay, just to find out what they are doing so that they can have an influence over them. So you need to be very, very careful of the kind of things you do, the kind of people you talk with and interact with, the kind of relationships that you have with people. You see, this conundrum of the family of what I'm going to talk to you about is even more dangerous than the coronavirus. It has killed many people and it has killed many great men and women, even than this 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 novel coronavirus. And you see, the, the accounts have a proverb that you know, Abu Abu Kawa, no fool, or shown to me, man, I say, Bibeka to the front of You know, the insect that will bite you is not the insect that is flying about making it, it's the insect that is in your dress. You see, so usually the familiar voices come from people who are not far from us. There are people who are very, 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 very close to us. You see, the enemy will not use people who are far from us to harm, harm us. He will use people who are, who are very, very close to us. Okay? You see, just like what we we call, we call the Trojan in computers. You see, sometimes when you install a, a software, but it's actually a malware. Okay? It comes as a software. Sometimes it, it can even be an antivirus, a free antivirus that you download and install on your computer. But in in the antivirus, you you would find that there's a hidden software that begins to pick up your the information from your computer to a second or a third party and if there are vital information in your system 
they can sh they can hack your system and shut your system down you know you see this is a, if this is an old strategy that, that has been there and i want to show you that this strategy began from the time of adam and eve and you need to be very very careful you see there, there's someone who's watching and you know god wants to deliver you from a very very dangerous situation and you need to listen to this message very very carefully and i believe that you, this message has to go across the world you, across the world and many lives will be saved will be saved now turn your bibles to genesis chapter 2 verse 16. you see when god created man god created man for a working relationship okay bible says that enoch walked with, with god and then he didn't that god carried him you see god always desires that his children will have a fellowship with him and a relationship with him and in and, and in a relationship you hear from the the, the, the the your partner you speak to your partner your partner also speaks back to you so there's communication there's a relationship there's a fellowship where you interact with the person so god created man for a working relationship bible says that in the cool of the day god will descend from heaven and god will come and have fellowship with adam and eve but you see when god god loved them so much and when god created the garden of Eden, he gave them authority to, to do whatever they could do bible says in genesis 2 16 that and the lord co god commanded the, the man saying of every tree of the garden you may freely eat so god gave them a variety of fruits they could eat and all the things they could do but and god also warned them that look there is this tree there it's called the the, the, the tree of of the knowledge of good and of evil you shall not eat of that tree the day you eat of it you shall surely die so this is the, the voice of god this is the one who created you in his own image gave you a place to stay who had fellowship with you and this was the instruction that god gave to adam this was the instruction but what happened bible says in genesis chapter 3 now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field that the lord god had made and he said to the woman did god really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden the woman answered the serpent we may eat the, the the fruit of the tree of the garden verse 3 but about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden god said you must not eat of it or you shall die you see when god gives you an instruction do not give the room and entertain any other contrary opinion or or, or or entertain any contrary voice now you see the strategy of familiar voices is that they are usually people who are, who are very close to you people you have interaction with i believe that the the serpent had built a, a, a had built trust with Eve to a point that the serpent could have conversation with Eve to the extent that Eve permitted the enemy or the serpent to even question God the integrity of God regarding what they could do in the Garden of Eden. You see, there are some people that you have brought into your life. You have given them too much space, too much room that they begin to question or ask certain important things in your life and you think that they care and, and, and they care about you. you see bible says in genesis chapter 3 verse 4 that when he released that information to the serpent look at what he said <laughs> you will surely not die for god knows that the day you eat of it your eyes will be open and you will be like god knowing good and evil and when the woman saw that the tree was good to, and pleasing to the eyes and it was desirable for obtaining wisdom she took the fruit and ate it she also gave some to her husband who was with her and ate it so what actually happened was that the enemy <laughs> the the devil was listening to uh eve was listening to the enemy to the serpent to a very familiar voice to the standard of question you know you know there's, there are certain people, I repeat, uh, there are certain people you have bought in your life. They have creeped subtly into your life and they form, they have form a, 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 they, they form a, a relationship with you. Okay? And if you do not take your time, if you do not take your time and allow God to move and direct your life and you begin to listen to these familiar voices, I'm telling you, your life will be utterly destroyed. Okay? So the serpent questioned God's integrity. And if gave you know, or release information, she gave the, the information to the serpent. You see, there are certain things in your life, or there are certain things that God tells you. God means that thing to be between you and Him. And you see, there are certain things you tell people you and you have not sought permission from God whether you should read those information. And, and I'm telling you, 
that those are the things the enemy will pick from your life that will destroy your life the kind of things the kind of people you talk to you anything about your marriage you tell your friend anything about your business you tell people okay you cannot keep secret there are certain things about your children that god wants you to hide you know to, you know one time i wanted to and i wanted to place you know some pictures on my status and the lord told me specifically I don't place those pictures there you know a small you are doing a small gathering they release your information you know people release they you know get pregnant they release their their their, their baby bumps a whole lot of trendy and you know a lot of things are going on in this world that it is a it is a portal it 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 is a portal for the enemy to operate in your life and you need to be careful the kind of things you tell your friends even your close friends even the people who are close to you okay tonight i'm going to show you a very sickly strategy of the enemy and i believe that your life will never be the same after you have obtained this truth and bible says in verse 7 now when surely when they ate the food they became they realized that they have become naked they were exposed you see god gave them a covering and immediately they ate the food their covering was removed and they they began to see their nakedness their emptiness okay you see there are certain people that god has placed you under that you have to be very very careful don't listen to the people who tell you oh you know sometimes when you you, you are obedient to your 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 your, your, your boss or you, you, are, you are serving under, under a pastor and he gives you opportunity people begin to say all sorts of things you hear oh you are even more anointed than your pastor you know you're even more skillful than your boss you're even more you know better than him and they begin to you know say a lot of things into your mind to change your perception about a lot of things and your your behavior and your attitude begins to change and your character begins to change i'm telling you that be very very careful be very very careful okay now bible says that the enemy was so cunning you see you see when those advice when those counsels from these familiar voices come you see bible says that when eve looked at the tree it was so pleasing to her, her eyes okay it is not everything that you see or taste or see that god allows you to have okay be very 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 careful you see there are people who are driving in very very expensive cars but i'm telling you when they go home they cannot even sleep people are involved in occultic powers and all those things god has given you a small ministry you know maybe the life of two or three people is all that matters in that ministry you want to be like other people you want to be on facebook for other people to know that you're on facebook but that is not actually what god wants you to do i'm i'm, I'm not a i'm not a person that likes to, to show my face on facebook right but God has a purpose and God has a plan. That is why I'm, I'm delivering this message to you. You know, did, during this lockdown period, you have to find out as a church, what does God want you to do? Maybe your congregation is not on Facebook or, or, or Instagram or Twitter. But you because you see other people preaching, you have also brought your service to Facebook. Maybe yours is, is, to, is, to, is to every Sunday morning call members of your church and pray with them. Maybe send them messages. Okay, and pray with them, knowing that God has a purpose and God has a plan. We want to be like people. We want to study people. You see, Bible says in Genesis, in Romans chapter five, verse twelve, that through the sin of Adam, death was brought into this world. You see, I can tell you that it is through the sin of Adam that we have this COVID nineteen. Okay, COVID is, COVID is, you know, is riding on the wings of death. Or the wings of death is riding on COVID and taking the life of many people okay it's through the sin of adam and eve so look we have to be very 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 careful very 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 careful very very careful the kind of people we interact with and kind of information that we that we that we release okay so bible says that so now listen how do you de determine that this is a familiar voice and it's a crafty voice and it's a voice that will destroy you first of all familiar voices come from people who are very very close to you people that you trust people that you can relate to people that you don't think evil about okay now when the advice come they come to what make you feel proud of, about yourself self pleasure self fulfillment and when they when the voices come they seem logical and reasonable but they don't fulfill god's purpose and god's plan and sometimes they tend to actually to act contrary to the will and 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 the word of god okay because look by association the serpent was able to give 
Eve a contrary. Eve permitted the serpent in her life by having a conversation and revealing God's plan to her, to the serpent, and the serpent had a voice in her life. So I want to ask you, who has a voice in your life? It could be your wife. It could be your, 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 your best friend. It could be someone very, very close to you. No, no man after the flesh. Begin to evaluate everything that comes in your life with a spiritual eye by seeking God's word and praying about it. Don't just act because it came from your wife. You see, the Bible says that if gave the fruit to Adam, who was with her. So it means that when the servant was having a conversation, you know, with the woman, the man was there. So who have you allowed in your life? Whom have you allowed your children to interact? You see, one of the things that helped me when I was growing up was that my mother always chose the friends that we should play with. When I bring someone to the house and the person, my mother was very prophetic. She look at the life. She can sit, look at the person and know that, you no, know, this person will not help me. And then she, she, she would sack the person from the house and advise me not to play with the person. And that guided my life. You see, now, <laughs> Let me, let me give you another example of this old strategy the enemy used. So, you understand that it's, it's an ancient and yet subtle and crafty strategy the enemy used to destroy people. You see, when God called Abraham, God gave him a promise. In, in Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, God said, told Abraham that I will bless you and make you into a great nation. So, so it, seems, it seems logical at the time. When God gives you a promise, you know, you know, and the promise is not being fulfilled. The Bible says that 10 years after the promise was being made, Sarah was not, didn't still have a, a child. And at, at that time, it was in the culture of Israel and the Jews that, you know, you can pick your mate servant if your wife is not given a child and give it to your husband to have children with. When God gave Abraham a, a, that promise, God did not tell Abraham that he was going to have, he was going to bless him through a child from a mate servant. But through Sarah, that was the promise that God made. But 10 years after the promise, after all the reproductive organs, after all the signs has shown that Sarah could not have a child again. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 16 verse 2, Sarah told Abraham that the Lord, this is what Sarah told Abraham, that the Lord has restrained me from having, bearing a child. How could she say that? You see, you see, sometimes when God tells us that he will bless us, many of us have received so many prophecies concerning our lives, but our current circumstances does not show that those promises those promises will come true and then you begin to have a second thought and a second doubt whether you should change the career whether whether you really heard the voice of god and then someone very close to you will begin to give you reasons because sarah had gotten to an age where her, where all her reproductive organs had, had gone had dried up and perhaps even the edge to even have sex at that age was not there you know so she she could give abraham logical reasons, reasons why you know, the promise of God could be fulfilled through Sarah, uh, through Hagar. You, you understand? You see, when familiar voices come to you, when they give you the fact, when they lay down the fact, it is so logical, it is so perfect, yet it is not coming from God. It is not the will of God. Notice that no matter whom it comes from, no matter how perfect that plan is, if it is not, if it is contrary to the will of God, the word of God, do not hearken to that advice. So we all know. You see, Bible says in, in you know, in Joshua chapter two and one verse five, but he said that not a not a word filled of any good thing which the Lord has spoken to the house of Israel, all came to pass. Look, if there's anybody you can trust, it is God. He never fails. He never fainteth not. You see, when you begin to trust in your education, in the qualifications you have, when you begin to compare yourself with people who are close to you. You know they'll begin to tell you all sort of things okay you see sometimes when you go through circumstance or you need a counsel and you speak to someone the person will talk to you based on his own experiences and his own expertise you see sometimes when people give you counsel it is not that they hate you but it is based on their own experiences okay and sometimes instead of us to wait and pray on god and listen to what god is saying we want expert advice expert opinions and, and they will tell you all sort of things and, and you, ne you, you neglect God's word and begin to walk by those things and your life will be completely destroyed. Look at this men's gold issue and saga that came. Many people got into men's gold because somebody spoke to them about men's gold. But they did not inquire from the Lord. Lord, you know, when David was in battle, he always asked, Lord, should we pursue? 
the Lord says, pursue, recover. When David is, is going for battle, sometimes the Lord will move ahead of him. He was always working with God. So let me give you an example. You see, when you read Genesis chapter 12, you know, God told, you know, God gave Abraham, I already mentioned that God gave Abraham a promise. But the time came, you know, that there was famine. And God told Abraham to go to Egypt. And to, it, because it was the will of God, when Abraham, Sarah was so beautiful. So when Abraham got, to, Abraham was afraid. But because it, it was the will of God for Abraham to be in Egypt, God protected Sarah, you know, from Pharaoh who was interested in him because she was so beautiful. Pharaoh wanted to take Sarah as a wife. In the same instance, Abraham's son, at a point in time, there was famine in that same land. And the Bible says that God told Isaac in Genesis chapter 26 that do not go to Egypt. You see, the same problem, the same situation was famine. In, Abraham, in Abraham's case, God told him to go to Egypt. But <laughs> for Isaac, Isaac, God asked him to stay on the land. And God protected Isaac's wife, Rebecca, you know, from... Abimelech, the king, who you know, who also wanted to take, you know, Isaac's wife. So you see, the same instance, the same circumstance, you know, God applied different techniques. When when the children of Israel were, were going through the were, were going through the desert, when they were tested, at a point God tells Moses, hit the rock, you know, with your staff. At a point God says, speak to the rock. So the fact that somebody did A, B, C, and was successful does not give you the permission to also do the same thing have you asked god about it have you prayed to god about it have you waited on god about it why do you want to do the same business you know as your other friend because it's going on well maybe god has a different plan a different business cry god wants to give you but because you didn't listen to god you followed the voice of these people and now you find yourself in trouble you see there was an old there, there was a prophet in Bethel that god sent to judah to Jeroboam because you know the Jeroboam disobeyed God and worked against God at the council of God and the old prophet went and prophesied God's mind to, to him and the, the, the Jeroboam wanted to see the prophet to kill him he stretched out his hand and through the power of God upon the prophet of God the, the, the hand of the king became stiff and he pleaded with the king when you read 1 Kings 13 to 1 Kings chapter 13 1 to 36 you find a story there now, when God sent the, the prophet, the God also gave the prophet an instruction. Now, when you go, don't eat there. Don't take anything. There. We turn back to Bethel and then relax. So, after performing all this wonderful, miraculous sign and delivering God's message, this prophet sent off back to Bethel. And then an old prophet, an old voice, an expert voice, people who have seen it all before, okay, Sometimes when we go through, when God speaks to us, we want to listen to the voice of the puppets, old puppets. I'm not saying, the Bible says that in the multitude of counsel that there's wisdom. But it is not a substitute for, hear, for hearing from God. When you are sure that God to, tells you to do something, you need to listen to God's voice. So the prophet went back and told the, the prophet that the angels of the Lord spoke to me and they said, oh, you can come back and eat. So he came back to to Judah and ate, you know, with, 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 with the old prophet. Then God spoke through the old prophet that, and told the man that you will not be buried with your father for going against the word of God. I don't care who, who, who is telling you what. If it is against the, the what you have heard from God, if it is against the word of God, do not do it. That is why so many young men and young men go to this old, this prophet's are uh, you prophet and they deceive them and they tell them your mother is killing you your your go and bring this remove your pants for me do all sort of nonsense anybody who tells you anything that is contrary to the to the voice and the word of god no matter who they are no, no matter who they are, where they are coming from it is against the counsel and it's against the will of god and do not listen to it hallelujah you see life is not straight sometimes we we'll go through many problems we need people to, to speak to and to talk to us but know that to everything there's Solomon said that in Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 4, that to everything there's a season, a time for for every purpose under heaven. God allows certain things to come into your life to prepare you for greater and mightier things. So you, the Bible said there's a time to weep, and there's a time to laugh, there's a time to mourn, and there's a time to dance. Understand that life is based on times and, and seasons. Wait on God, pray, read God's word, let the Holy Spirit speak to you. If you're a child of God, one assurance that you have is that 
the, the spirit of God lives to you. Hmm? The spirit of man is like the candlestick of, of, of the Lord. The Bible says he, he speaks to is to us through our, 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 our convictions, our inner belly. We have convictions from the Holy Spirit. You see, sometimes we can be drawn by the challenges of life that if we do not fix our eyes on Jesus and walk with Him, we'll be inundated with so many familiar and deceptive voices that, that seem sometimes so reasonable, but they are a trap and a snare, and they prevent us from holding on to God's word and His promises. When we pay attention to such voices, we will miss out on God's word and we will never accomplish God's purpose for our life. The Bible says that David was so conscious about, about the voices and the counsel of men that he placed his life completely in the hands of God who called him and held him to his promises. David said in Psalm 119 verse 105, I love it so much, he says that, Lord, your word is a lamp for my feet and the light of my path. David determined to walk by the word of God. David was convicted that a walk with God was the only way to victory in life. And so in whatever he did, he walked with God. He listened to the voice of God. He, he, he made mistakes in life. But anytime he made his, 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 he set his heart on God. And he hearkened to hear the voice of God. And you know why King Saul was replaced by David? When you read Acts chapter 13 verse 2, David, God said that David was, um, he removed Saul because he wanted to place David there because David was um, a man after his own heart. Why? Because David will always do the will of God. This is the report that God, God said about David. Yet, David, this was a high recommendation from God. Yet, David went through challenges and situations in life as if there was no even God in his life. He made a lot of mistakes. God allows, mistake, allows us to make mistakes. But in all, of, in all of David's life, he made sure that God had a favorable report on him. His life typically illustrates how life can be filled with seasons of ups and downs. Yet when we put our trust and our hope in God, God will lead us onto the right path. Brethren, listen to the voice of God. The Bible says that anytime David encountered challenges, do you know what he did? He looked up to God. David looked out to God. <laughs> he looked up to God all the time. All the time. All the time. <laughs> David said in Psalm 119, 118 verse 9. Turn your Bibles to Psalm 118 verse 9. He said, David said that it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to, to put your trust in princes. It is better. To take refuge in the Lord. <laughs> in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5, the, the Bible says that curse is the man who trusts in mankind and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from God. Anybody who relies on his flesh, you see, the world will always reward you for relying on the flesh. Okay, you watch out. All these foolish songs that are being sung, they have sponsors. When somebody shows his breast and exposes his bumps and all those things, they get paid and they make a lot of money. So you'll be tempted to follow after the patterns of this world. The Bible says that you are cursed. Anybody who follows the patterns of this world can put your trust in man. You are a cursed person. You cannot inherit the internal, eternal things of God. The things that will last. Look, life, life here is just a journey. Hmm? The Bible says in Isaiah 31 verse 1, what to those who go who go to Egypt for help? Egypt refers to, you know, the flesh and our, our past lives and all those things, and you rely on on your strength. Eh? Bible says that, woe a warning to those those people who rely on horses, those who trust in chariots, eh, and horsemen because they are very strong, but who do not look to the Holy One of Israel nor seek the Lord. What are you magnifying behind over God's word? Whose voice are you magnifying over the word of God and, and over the voice of God? Who are you listening to? Who have you allowed in your life to feed you with all those information? Are you saying that God is unable to or is incapable? Are his hands too short to heal or to save you? Whose report do you believe? Are you believing the doctor's report over your situation or what people are telling you? People will say, oh, people always, uh, people will die. Hmm? Sicknesses will kill. This sickness has killed as you may see. This sickness has killed also in so there's, there's no hope. Whose voice are you magnifying? Bible says in some in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18, 
The preparations of the heart belongs to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Wait on God and listen to God. Be careful of the friends you have, you have, you have surrounded with and the counsel of your friends. When God, when God asked Moses to select 12, the people from all the 12, 12 tribes of Israel to the promised land, you know, in Numbers chapter 13, when they went, it was only Joshua and Caleb who held on to the promise and, the, and what God has said. Okay, they confirmed that after the 40 days of spying the land, they confirmed that yes, the land was full of milk and honey, as the Lord has said. But the people began to put fear, to put fear in the children of Israel by saying that they were incapable of honoring the promise that God has said. They said that when you read Genesis 13 31, it says that, but the men who had gone up with him replied, We cannot go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. Have they forgotten that God had delivered them from the hands of the Egyptians? And indeed they confirmed that yes, as God has said, the land was flowing with milk and honey. Yet people put fear in them. Familiar voices always put fear. And the fear is not it's it's the fear is to prevent you from reaching your destiny and your plan. So any voice that you hear that tries to put fear in you, Bible says that for I have not given you the spirit of fear. Any voice that begins to put fear in you. For you to act or do something, it's, it's, it's a spirit of witchcraft. It's, it's, it's not from God. It's a familiar voice that is not from God that will destroy your life. Do not allow anybody to put, put fear in your life. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we become selective of the promises of God. How can the God who delivered you from, e from Egypt not give you the promised land? Okay. So sometimes, we, you know, instead of us to put our faith in God and faith in God, you know, we put our we trust God in different ways, one way or the other, and then we allow certain things to happen. Okay, so we need to come to a point in our life where we put our, our lives fully and trust God. Bible says in James chapter one, verse six to eight, it says that but let him act in faith, but let him act in faith. Bible says that without faith it's impossible to please God. Anytime you ask God, you say that of anything, let him act faith. With no doubt and for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man and stable and stable in all his ways. When we come before the presence of God, nothing else should take our attention from God. God is more than enough. A preacher said that God plus one is the majority. Yes, I strongly believe that if you choose to rely completely on the word of God. And even if you are the only one person holding on to the promise of God, God will cause his name to be, to be glorified in your life. Bible says in Proverbs 29 verse 25 that whoever trusts in the Lord will be kept safe. God will keep you safe from this coronavirus if you put your trust in him. No amount of persuasion or sweet words from, from human beings can change your life. It is the power of God that changes the life of a man. Remember Elijah and the and the and, and the and the forty prophets of, of, of Asherah and the four hundred fifty prophets of Baal. You know, one man he he confronted this idolatrous, occultic, you know, you know, people prophets, and he boldly stood up on the word of God and stood for God, and the power of God was so much upon him. And the, and, and 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 God ensured that God's words too before Jezebel on all the all these evil prophets and Elijah stood on the mountain of Carmel to confront you know this prophets of Baal and Asherah okay one man God plus one is the majority when God asks you to take any any position you must listen to the voice of God you must listen to the counsel of God you must walk by the plan and the purpose of God and hold on to God's word you know so look the Bible says in Numbers chapter 15 verse 11, And the Lord said to Moses, How long will the people treat me with contempt? How, how long will they refuse to believe in me, despite all the signs I have performed among them? So, so sometimes when we listen to, all the time, when we listen to the voice of people, other than the voice of God, we grieve God. We cause so much anger and so much pain in the heart of God. Look at, look at who rebuked Jesus Christ. It was Peter, right? It was a familiar voice. When Jesus said he was going to die, Peter rebuked Jesus and said, No, you will not die. You will not die. 
familiar voices are always very people who are close with us. But if you determine to walk with the word of God, your life will never be the same. Joshua said in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. And, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Look, <laughs> Jesus is the only way through which you can, you can reconcile back to life. Let your life be based on Jesus. Bible says that greater love has no one than this. That one will lay down his own life for his friends. No friend of yours can lay down his life for you. But Jesus laid down his life for you. Bible says that we have redemption through his blood. He forgave us our, our sins. Bible says, but God demonstrates his love to us. That whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So you need to put your trust in God. Begin to work with God. God's love is so infinite. Pay attention to God. Pay attention to prayer. Okay? When you pray, read God's words. Have time to study God's word. Whatever situation you are going through, you can take counsel from people. But let that counsel be convicted by the Holy Spirit that the counsel you are taking is really from God. And let it be based on the word of God. And I'm telling you, your destiny can never be, be aborted. Any decision that you take that is based on God's word can never be aborted by the enemy. And I believe that your life will never be the same. Look, listen to the voice of God. Trust God. No matter what you are going to, trust God. And I believe that your life will never be the same. I want to pray for you. Any challenge you are facing, I want to pray for you tonight. And I want to make certain declarations. And I believe that anything that has gone wrong in your life is irreversible by prayer. On this note, I declare in the name of Jesus that may your spirit and your mind be open. May God grant you wisdom and understanding to to know how great the width and the length and the breadth of the of the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit that is available to us and the conviction and the counsel of the Holy Spirit. May your spirit be open, may your mind be open. I pray that any anything that has gone wrong in your marriage, in your relationship, in your business, in your finances through a bad counsel, through a familiar voice, we reverse it back in the name of Jesus. And we speak the mind and the power of God and the counsel of God over our life. I declare that you are blessed in Jesus' name we pray. God bless you and share this image and I believe that many people will bless through this and many lives will be touched in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much.